Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and here I am, alone, feeling sorry for myself. I feel so sorry for myself, in fact, that I got a cupcake. Yes, I like cupcake with pink frosting, don't judge me. I feel sorry for myself, I think, because uh, I ended up uh, having to make a compromise at work and work a shift I really didn't want to work. I feel sorry because I had to cancel an appointment with a friend and uh, let someone down and because I couldn't uh, make everyone happy and I couldn't make myself happy. I had to do it because it was the right thing to do uh, and a necessary compromise. Still, it doesn't feel good and uh, so here I am wearing a sweater uh, sweatpants waiting for my shift to start in a few hours time to start working evenings again for the fifth day in a row so the topic of today's video is is alone time selfish and this video it goes out to all the UI NFPs out there but let me first start by talking about an ENFJ friend of mine I know an ENFJ that she would swear she was an introvert. She would swear she was an introvert because she says, I need to be alone. I need to get away from people. Sometimes I just need to be by myself. I'm tired of having people around me on my shoulders all the time. I'm tired of people leaning on me. So I need these days off. I don't want to meet anybody. I don't want you to call me. Let me be alone. And she's an interesting person uh, because um, she says, I need alone time to be selfish. Now, I think INFPs are interesting because I think uh, if you would take the question, how much alone time do you need? I think INFPs would score in the top 10%. They would all say, I need more alone time than the average amount of the population. I need more time to myself to feel happy, refreshed, relaxed. INFPs are some of the most prone to talk about the need to be alone, the need for quiet, the need for peace, the need for to be in nature, to be by yourself, to go out by yourself, to go to a movie by yourself, to go out for dinner by yourself to do something for yourself, by yourself, with nobody around you to tell you what to do, nobody to compromise with, nobody to discuss with. INFPs are interesting because they are like the masters of uh, personal boundaries and the uh, personal boundary gurus, my own <laughs> personal boundary gurus. I think if there's anything I've gotten out of talking to INFPs is uh, the respect I feel towards their ability to set boundaries and say I don't want to meet up today or I'm tired or I don't feel like it or I'd rather be by myself today or I have a book to read or <laughs> you know I have something else to do so I can't uh, can't come I have a book to read you know uh, so antisocial still so uh, impressively antisocial and uh, I think there is something most people out there can agree with in this uh, even an ENFJ, you know, the Oprah Winfrey of the 16 personality types can agree that I need alone time to feel sane. <laughs> and that's, uh, I think, uh, interesting. Because to an ENFJ, it's uh, equated with the only time in a day where an ENFJ can think about themselves. <laughs> when you're alone, is that's the only time when you can completely ignore and pretend nobody else is around you and nobody else needs you. So it's the only time when you have time to catch up with yourself and to do things for yourself. I think uh, ENFJs go on a spectrum on this. I think the more self-aware an ENFJ becomes, the better they become at setting boundaries. While early in age they might struggle to be alone and might feel uh, it's hard to set boundaries for yourself or hard to ask for alone time or hard to be by yourself. I think the older they get, the more aware they will become of this need in themselves. And this comes from basically 
having hit against the wall a bunch of times. How do extroverted judging types learn? Well, they force themselves forward because they love to force themselves on things and then they crash into the wall and then they learn boundaries. That's how EJs learn boundaries. You know, if uh, IPs are people that kind of uh, dash around the beach, you know, not sure if there's that been and not really committing to anything and kind of keeping their options open and kind of like feeling things out and like, oh, um, I can help a little bit and I'm pinching in a little bit of effort there and a little bit of effort there. And then uh, the rest of the time, like pulling back. EJs are the people that jump straight in and they go, what can I do for you? How much can I do it? I'm going to be the best helper ever. I'm going to do so much for you. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to answer every call. Call me 2 a.m. in the morning. Do whatever. I'll be there. Of course I'll be there. So they are on the opposite ends of a uh, spectrum. EJs are extremely passionate and extremely forward and extremely aggressively caring and interpersonal aggressive to get to know you aggressive to have time with you you know offended if you don't want to hang out with them offended if they uh, if you don't want to work with them offended if you don't want to collaborate or uh, be in their space or be around them IPs are on the spectrum of uh, Afraid to get to know people, unsure whether they want to befriend somebody, unsure if they want to start a relationship with somebody, unsure if they want to uh, be around other people, unsure if they can trust others, unsure if they can open up to others, unsure if they can be themselves around other people, careful not to say anything wrong, careful not to do anything bad. I think uh, INFPs even go so far in this, they master the ability to be alone around other people. To be around other people, yet still be alone. Still be completely turned off to your environment, oblivious to the people around you. But the impressive thing about INFPs is because they can be selfish, they can also be incredibly generous. Because they can set boundaries, they can also compromise these boundaries and do extremely kind acts towards other people. And this is uh, almost a contradiction in itself, but it's obvious that we all need alone time to function and to be healthy as human beings. If we are stressed or anxious or neurotic or compulsive in our ability or our need to help other people or to be around other people, we also become overbearing, anxious, hard to function around, hard to talk to, hard to be around because we are so overbearing and so anxious and so out open with our affective emotional energy. We put out the negative vibes everywhere we go our, while our effort says, I'm trying to help you. The intention behind it says that I'm desperate for approval. But when an INFP helps, it's because they know they can. It's because they trust you 100%. It's because they know they can open up to you. It's because they know that you uh, will appreciate it. It's because they know that you are a person worthy of help. INFPs can be incredibly generous and vulnerably generous and supportive and helpful and kind and social and open to connect with you and to put themselves out there if you have their trust. And that's why INFPs, they're described in two different ways. They're described by ESTJs as cold and unemotional and unengaged and disengaged and passive. And they're described by people who are become their friends as uh, extremely fascinating, deep, complex, considerate, good at listening, uh, helpful, supportive, sincere, honest, authentic, real. And that's interesting because you know guys we're doing this study on good and evil. And this is the extent where good and evil becomes relative. Because to an ESTJ, one of the biggest evils in the world 
is to be unhelpful or to be uncollaborative or to be passive or uncommunicative or disengaged or apathetic, to not work, to not perform, to not contribute, to not pull in your hours, to not be there, to not finish on time, to not be uh, conclusive or to do something 100%. But... Uh, from this perspective, <laughs> the INFP is like the ultimate evil of the ESTJ. They are, it's the one thing they are all insecure about. They're, it's the one thing they're all, they all feel bad about. Or the, it's the least they would like to be in the whole wide world. It's the, the thing they would like to be the least of all things in the whole wide world. But this is only the negative of the INFP. It's only one side of it. And there are multiple sides to every personality type. So the question is how do we avoid inserting our negative judgment on other people, on other personality types? How do we avoid classifying alone time as something evil? The topic was is alone time selfish? Is alone time evil? Is uh, wanting to be alone or is setting boundaries something bad? I mean, I can't be the only person that feels a little bit of guilt if I say I can't do that. I'm not able to come. I'm tired. I need some time for myself. I need to read. Am I the only person who can um, struggle to set boundaries? No, I don't think so. I'm not the only person who has this idea that it is something evil or rude to be by yourself when you could be supporting other people, helping other people, doing things for other people all the time, like uh, Duracell Bunny with infinite energy and stamina. Or is the alone time something good? Is it a time when we can check ourselves, make sure we have the right intention, make sure we are good people, make sure we're doing things for the right reasons? Is it uh, something that can help us make sure that we are in tune with our ethical compass, that we are not getting corrupted by the people around us, that we are not throwing ourselves into the wrong people or into the wrong behavior, the wrong decisions, the wrong goals for the wrong reasons. It's because I was by myself for two days that I was able to change the scope of this entire project around. That's why we start doing these uh, community research projects. That's why we're starting with uh, these uh, community creative exercises. That's why we're doing these things uh, now. We're doing it to... I'm, I've got, I got these ideas because when I was alone, I had the time to do something for myself because I wanted to, because there was nobody else needing me, because nobody had asked me to do anything because uh, there was nothing on my to-do list, because I could do exactly what I wanted. I could be free, I could be myself, and I could be creative, and I could be deeply creative, and I could be focused in my creativity, and I could set aside hours. And uh, so it was an incredibly refreshing time, but also a time where I felt really bad about myself. <laughs> Uh, so my dilemma is uh, being alone and the question to you guys is how do you feel about being alone? How do you feel about setting boundaries? Do you feel anxious when alone or do you feel completely calm, completely relaxed, completely at peace? How do you feel about equating, uh, equating uh, being alone to being useless or being improductive or to being passive? Or how do you feel about equating it to getting to know yourself or getting experience and perspective and insight and making discoveries and be getting a chance to be creative and getting a chance to uh, check yourself or to change your goals or to work on yourself or to understand something? How do you feel about alone time as an INFP and how do you deal with it? And why are INFPs so awesome at getting and seeking alone time? And why are other types so bad at it?